climb a tree. Watch out. Ah! Hi, welcome to another episode of the Forbidden Limb Podcast. I'm your host, Richard New, and as always, I'm here with Brian Hink and Jeremy Commander. Uh, last episode, we talked about uh, when should we get art for our, our game, when should we uh, decide to... Uh, uh, what should we use originally, and what should we, uh, when should we eventually move on to something more professional? Um, today we're going to be talking about, uh, when we make that decision, what should we do? Um, you've worked with uh, an artist just recently, so let's talk about a little <clears throat> bit about uh, your experience with New Salem. Uh, sure. You just worked with an artist. The art is beautiful. Um, how do you go about finding an artist that is right for your game? Yeah, well, I mean, if we take the example of New Salem, that one, uh, there was a game that came out by Fantasy Flight called Winter Tales. Um, and I, as soon as I saw that game, I didn't know anything about it, but I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. It was, um, uh, he calls it a grotesque noir is mm -hmm. the style. Um, but I, I just, I fell in love with it. And so when we made a game about witches in the Salem Witch Trial, um, I, I went and found that artist for that game. And uh, so, and I was surprised to find out that he actually doesn't speak English. Wow. I mean, he did a little bit, but um, he speaks Italian. So we've been communicating throughout that whole process using Google Translator, which was, yeah, really interesting, but it's actually worked pretty well. And when you're working with uh, art, you can, you can actually use a lot of visual references and like arrows pointing to things and like this icon should go here and put it actually on there. And then it, it's clearer. Okay. Um, even if they, even if you speak, you both speak the same language, you can still do that and make it clearer, but this forced us to do it. So do you feel some, um, uh, uh, more aesthetic choices were lost in the translation, or...? Hmm, there were some communication difficulties, now that I think about it, with more on the graphic design side of things. Okay. Uh, because he also did the graphic design, you know, but we had played the game, you know, s you know hundreds of times that we knew the graphic design, mm -hmm. uh, but he didn't as as well, and so there were some, we had to do some uh, rework there. After, okay. You know, the process, Is it but. common to find an artist that's also the graphic designer, or do you find that they don't really... Uh, uh mesh that often you have to be careful uh because uh a lot of artists they're not the same thing they're not absolutely at all. not they're yeah. not at all um, can we define what's the difference between an artist and a graphic designer go Tell ahead me. sure sure can i can you hand me a box yeah yeah here's a couple of them yeah what's your day break here okay where my day break shirt yeah nice. root for the home team local <laughs> game company so um, an artist would draw the werewolf here or make the actual werewolf it would generate art original content the graphic and I designer, love the art in this game. The characters, oh, it's great, they're all right? great. Yeah, and, and so the so in this case, Bezier hired a very talented artist that does this, this cartoony style artwork for this game. And the artwork, the characters are very expressive. It's great artwork. The graphic designer's job is to make that artwork usable in the context of the game for the players. It has to be un understandable. They're going to pick, you know, what font do they use? How big is the font? Where does the title go? Is it centered? Is it a line left? Where does the barcode go on the box? Uh, and the, the icons on cards, do they go in the upper left, upper right? Is it in, in multiple corners? And the graphic designer is doing these kinds of things. Here on the edge of the box, the graphic designer would do the play time and number of players. This one's semi-transparent with the background showing through. And the designer would have to decide, okay, is that still readable? Do I want the transparency so it looks nicer? Or do I want to make it a big white block? And like here we see these letters are stroked with the white out outline and they have a shadow. Again, the graphic designer is making sure that this word, even though it's orange on orange, is still readable and functional. So they're kind of like, if you think of it in software, you have your programmer and you have your human interface designer. The graphic designer is the human interface designer, making sure that a real person can use this. And the programmer is responsible for the content and the mechanics. So your artist is doing art and your graphic designer is making it usable by humans. Okay. In, but uh, so usability is definitely number one. But it, they are also there to make it visually appealing. As right. Well. To, to look good. Yeah. But but number one is usability. But yeah, it's just not the actual like drawings and illustrations. That's the artwork. What you know? How big should this text be? Should where it should be aligned? So it's, it's you look at it and it looks nice. And you can tell. I mean, I've done a lot of Kickstarter. Backed a lot of Kickstarter campaigns. I can tell when they had a real graphic designer versus when the designer did it himself. Yep. Can you give some example of something that wasn't done as well? I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Yeah, okay. but yeah. I'm sure you have some games in your collection too. That if you look at it and you go like, this game is just it's very functional, mm -hmm. uh, and the gameplay may be good, but it's just kind of ugly or kind of clunky, or you, it's it, hard to use because like yeah. you know you're looking maybe you have a hand of cards and like the the, the icons are, are in the right side. Yeah, so like every time I need to look at a symbol, I have to like pull the card out completely and look right. at it. 
Uh, we or, played yeah. a game the other day, and I was actually very impressed with that, the, the fruit game. And I don't want to, you know, go into too much detail or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but Banana Kamana. Yeah. They yep. had... Okay. I <laughs> <laughs> they had the little icon. They had the big pictures in the middle of the card, and then they had little icons up in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah. And I just remember fanning out the cards the first time and looking at that going... Thank goodness. That's okay. awesome. That's amazing. I can tell exactly what's in my hand yeah. by just the quick, the quick fan of... of and that's cards. that's visual design rather than mechanical design. And I, I know that I am not a great visual designer, so th that I can defer to someone who has better design sense there to make sure that my game is nicer looking, more appealing, and, and is more functional. We don't have to throw someone under the bus because this is uh, our game. So good cop, bad cop, this is, the, <laughs> this is the, the first edition of the game. But I can tell you, you know, something that we did um, that, that wasn't, wasn't the best from a graphic design perspective. And I remember you actually pointed it out to us. It drove me crazy. Um, and, it, you know, a couple of people have. But um, mm. the, the equipment cards in the game actually have different sizes of the mm. font based on how much text is there. So if you see something with a lot of text, it's smaller. Uh, but then, so like oh, lots of text. Nice. This, this is a this is a promo. That's a promo. Uh, it's not really going to affect how well you can play the game unless you can't read that writing. I mean, this is a promo card, so it's not it's not that critical that that it's perfect. But um, it's just something that you know we didn't really know any better. And there's a lot of those things that that we just don't know any better. I'd say the back of back of these uh, equipment cards maybe aren't. Uh, it's not the best either. It doesn't pop out. It doesn't have um, gray and oh, brown yeah, here, is not here. maybe the best. Here's a good one. So uh, here on the back of our integrity cards. Um, your integrity cards, you have three in front of you, and this is kind of the what's important about the game. But the logo, um, it says good cop, bad cop in here, if you look really closely. Oh, you know, I, I just noticed cop, that for the first time cop. ever. <laughs> but, you know, people have pictures, you know, they're going to tweet about it, they're going to put it on Facebook, and when they have these cards out there, you can't even see the name of the game, so nobody even knows that. Uh, yeah, but yeah. if we were to have a, a so big, gold very on gold, clear... Essentially. Yeah. Uh, good cop, bad cop. Then... So your, your graphic designer would go, "Hey, is it important to read the name of the game in the back of the yeah, card?" Yeah. And you'd say yes, and he'd be, "Okay, let me let me outline this text and let me change it and yep. maybe, maybe black with a, a white outline or something." And he'd make it he'd make it pop out. Right. So you can read that and yep. know, oh, okay, that's what it is. Another another thing too, I can point out. So the the name, even this, if you put this on the shelf, of, this is the first edition of it, but. The name is so small that if you look, if you're <laughs> ten feet away, you're not going to be able to read what What's the, the name, name of the game? game is. So, like our our second edition, I'm just going to see a bunch of guys not wearing shirts and wonder what's yeah, going on. It's just a lot <laughs> lot bigger. The the box is bigger. It's going to pop out better. But still, the the it's just you can see the name of the game from a a, a long way away. So a couple of uh, mistakes that we made when we kind of tried to do part of it ourselves, but we had our artist do it. Um, but you know maybe he was more of a graphic designer for um, other mediums, but, you know, tabletop gaming, he, he maybe didn't know what was important and what isn't. So okay. um, that's why it's so critical to, you know, it's worth paying somebody who's a professional graphic designer to do it. Think of things that you never, you wouldn't have thought of. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, well, how would I go out and find uh, an artist? I, I have no clue. Like I've, I've said in the last episode, I'm, I'm working on my first game right now, and we're certainly not even close to, you know, sure, like, yeah, we're yeah. going to do our first prototype. But I want to. I think I'm going to defer to Brian first, where he okay. looks for artists, because I think I'll have some that he hasn't used yet. Okay, and I'll build on top of Brian. Okay. Okay. All right. Like, so that's a challenge. I, do I just? <laughs> you mentioned you played another game, and yeah. you like that artist, and you found him that way. Yep. But not all artists that you could hire out there have done games before. So, right. like, yeah, how do we yeah. find? Um, so for Good Cop, Bad Cop, we found the artist through Deviant. So you can go to, um, I think it's just Deviant.com. It's DeviantArt. DeviantArt.com. So that that has a bunch of artists who are just getting, uh, not, not, I wouldn't say they're just getting started. It's a portfolio but they, site. Yeah, yeah, yeah so they put site. up their portfolio, their um, examples of, you know, uh, art from from whatever they've, they've done uh, or graphic design, but... Um, they, they have your portfolio and then you can contact them if you like it. If it's going to fit a game that you're doing, you can even contact them. And it's a good way to uh, reach out to, to people. A lot of times they'll put the price right on there, which is one reason we went with Dwayne for Good Cop, Bad Cop, Dwayne Biddick's, um, because he had his price right on there. We knew it was, it was a good price. Um, and so we were like, yeah, we can afford that. And we can calculate how many cards do we have, how much art do we need, um, and, and then we go, oh, we can afford him. So that's why I was like, yeah, all right, we're going to get in touch with him. So that, that's a really good one. Uh, okay. Deviant, and then there's similar sites too. I guess, yeah, portfolio sites is a way, good way to describe it, but there's more out there. But if you search for um, 
artwork or if you find an artist that you you so another way to do it find an artist that that you like like we did for new salem or if you see them uh so you can go to board game geek and and, and say look at who the artist yeah is. i like i like the art in lifeboat i'm gonna go figure out who that is and contact them um and and if they have uh, availability and they fit your price then you know they would be a good uh, good artist to use too okay um uh, local conventions or other not even just local conventions but conventions they have an artist alley yeah um, so you can go meet them face to face um so like we went to WonderCon recently this is i think this is really good advice yeah so i went to artist alley and and it was more of a comic convention which is the even better place than like a more of a tabletop gaming convention. yeah yeah for sure um, yeah. or an anime convention yeah because that's all about the artwork and the style and the cartooniness yeah. so a comic book convention or an anime convention is a great place to go shop for artists and talk to them face to face and see their work live. Yeah. What if what if that's not my style? If it's not your style, I got some other resources for you. But okay. even so, like at this comic convention, there were many different styles. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, there's probably fifty different styles easily. There's yeah. tons of different styles. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a huge convention. Yeah. Okay. There were there were at least fifty different booths that I was able to just walk down the the aisle. They have all their art everywhere, and I see like, oh, that's great for this game that we have coming up. Um, and so then I can go talk to them and just to shake their hand, meet them face to face, tell tell them about the game, show them how excited you are about it, um, and then see if it 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 might fit with them and just exchange contact info. That's that's a great way to do it too. Does the artist feel like typecast if you know they've done something before? Now they you know do artists want to do something different most of the time, or is it just like? Uh, you know, just keep doing that. Like, mm-hmm. would they be insulted by you saying, hey, I like your work on this thing, do that for me again? Hmm. That's a good question. I, I would want to ask an artist, but I, I would think it would uh, it would differ depending on the artist and their style. You're a writer. Yes. If I loved your novel and I wanted a sequel, would you be insulted? No. I mean, <laughs> that, uh, it, I, I'm wondering if it might be different, though, if you hired me to write... A romance or something like that, mm-hmm. which I might not be, you know, suited for. But all right, all right, I'll do that. And then all I get from that point on <laughs> is romance offers. You know, well, if you're hungry enough, it's better than you know being broke and starving. I well, suppose <laughs> maybe maybe uh, maybe we we have some some people who are watching that that might be artists or can answer that question. So maybe that'd be a good good way to you know post on our BGG forum or uh, leave a comment and just give your answer to that because I don't think we're we're really qualified or how to often do musicians change styles? If a musician has a style of music. That's it's probably the style they like to do. Okay, and so they may not even keep yeah. making music. And that's why they show that stuff at the art conventions because this is the stuff that I this is that I this is what I like I to do, do well and yeah. I like to do okay. That makes sense this is my style when we do a game i want to make sure that they have some uh you, you know i don't need all of the control the cre- you know let them be uh creative with with what they uh, want to create for the game so i'd rather just kind of describe this is what i'm thinking for this character but you go ahead and go go crazy you know try to think of something cooler better different um and i want to see it okay so uh, um, what other resources do you have yeah absolutely other places you can go to look for art so People who use Adobe's products to generate art will use a portfolio website called Behance, which is supported by Adobe, and it's like Behance.com. Uh, and so the Behance, you can look for people who are specifically using Photoshop and Illustrator to generate content. Uh, another one that a lot of artists use to generate is a website called Fiverr.com. Fiverr with mm-hmm. two Vs. Mm-hmm. And so if you look, go look in the homepage of Fiverr, it's like, oh, I'll draw you as a yellow character, because they can't say Simpsons character. Or I'll draw you in a style <laughs> of, you know, a classic cartoon character. And it's like Warner Brothers or, 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 or Mickey Mouse, that kind of thing. I have a picture of me and my wife as Lego people from, that I got at Legoland. <laughs> there you go. And so these artists are, are putting up a, a commission for five bucks yep. to buy a piece of art from them for five bucks, hoping to get more work out of that. So you can literally shop their style on Fiverr, maybe even commission a couple things for five bucks and see how it turns out, and then go further if you, if you like their style. And okay. that's a good way to do it because then you also get some more information about like maybe how quick they are they to respond if you ask them a around. question, you know, because that's important if you if you sign an artist to your game and then you know every time you send them an email it takes two weeks to get back to you. Other places you can go to find an, an artist or a graphic designer. I'm going to give you one of each. So uh, there is a website called uh, Comics Alliance, and every week they do this feature called Best Week Ever in, in basically fan art. And these are all fans making different comic book fan art. Uh, and what they do is they collect all of it or aggregate it, and there's just this huge list with like 50 artists or 100 artists at all kinds of different websites, 
And the sample artwork they have, like for Valentine's Day, they did couples. So there was like the Joker and Harley Quinn, and it was Superman and Wonder Woman, and all these kinds of different couples on there. And it links off to the artist's website. So if you're looking for a comic or cartoon style, and the styles are pretty diverse within this, even within that, it's not all comic book style. You can look at this Best Week Ever feature every week, and new artists are on there every week, and link off and follow up with them. Okay. And then for graphic design, there is a crowdsourcing graphic design website called 99designs.com. And the way that works is I prepay for designs. I kind of say, so I want a box design. And then all the designers on that website compete for that commission. They will all ship you or show you different box designs they have. And the one you pick is the guy who gets paid. And so this lets you shop around or get a crowdsourced graphic design project done. And boxes is one of the categories. Logos is a category. I could do like a card back, those kinds of things. And I get to crowdsource my graphic design if I would like to. Okay. And then uh, another another one too. Just um, ask a graphic designer, ask an artist. They would love to give you references. You know, yeah, you people know, they work with. If their style doesn't fit, um, if they don't have time, um, I recently asked uh, Daniel Solis um, about some graphic design questions, and you know, asked if he he knew of somebody who could maybe help us out with a future game. We really need a graphic designer. He gave me a list of it was a good dozen people. You know, that I can now look into, see if they have portfolios online, reach out to them, and see if they they might fit for what we need. Um, one other thing too that we didn't we didn't mention was um, was local art schools. Yep, um, I've done that before, where you can go to a, a, a local uh, college, university, um, and and the art department will usually have a, like a, a website where they have examples of their artists. Um, the good thing about that is uh, most universities have an art program, so not even yeah. just an art school. Yeah, yeah, even a community college. Yep, yep, they're they're everywhere. So um, you can go look at look at examples that might fit your game. Um, reach out to them. Sometimes it's a little harder to get contact information uh, on on an artist that way, but usually they have an online portfolio as well. So you get their name, search for, you know, John Doe art, um, then you can find it that way. So that's a good one. And especially because they're probably just getting started and the margins on a tabletop game are pretty low that you can't really afford to, to spend a whole lot of money on art. So um, that's a way to get somebody who is probably going to be uh, less expensive. Um, it might might need some more back and forth. They might not put it in the right format. There might be some mistakes there. But um, if you really need to do it at a, on a low budget, that's a good way to do it. The well, last question then, and it gets into what you're saying. Let's be a little bit vulgar here. Dollars and cents, how much does art cost, generally speaking? Like, give me some ballpark. Ballpark. It can be, you know, for a, a simple game, uh, we can take a 54-card game. Um, if you were to do art for that and say, I don't know, should we say 20 different pieces of art, 25, um, it could be as low as 20 bucks per piece. Um, you, you can also get bulk bulk discounts. Uh, but I would say anywhere anywhere from from $200, you know, for somebody who's, you know, kind of just getting started to um, over 5000 easily. Okay. Um, so you really just got to get quotes, you know, based on their experience, their style. If you get a very experienced artist, you might be able to use some of their uh, notoriety to help market your game. So maybe it is worth. So your artist in Italy is yeah. already well well established yep. and well known by a lot of people, yep. and has been doing that for a long time. Yep. And so his rate is higher because you, you you get what you pay for. You're paying for like a very known artist. Can you talk about his rate? Um. Well, uh, I'll, I'll talk about part of it in that um, we're giving him, uh, at that point, we couldn't afford to pay for all of the art up front. So we're giving him royalties on sales of New Salem. So we, we gave him a big chunk of money up front to get started, to get our, our first okay. pieces of art for our Kickstarter That's campaign. That's my next question. Yeah, and then now every time we sell a copy of New Salem, he gets a, a piece of that. Okay. So, um, you know, so the that's amount, a possibility in yeah. being able to, to pay for the, yep. the, the art. But okay. I believe that his art is good enough that it's going to sell more. So I'm okay giving him a piece of it. Although, um, I wouldn't recommend it in, in general uh, to give... That was a risky move on Brian's It really part. was. It yeah. really was. Uh, we Would you do that again? No, I wouldn't do that again. <laughs> no. but, but, I, but I'm glad. I think it was the right decision then because we got an artist that, that you know, was extremely, extremely talented. Um, to make our game, and at that point, we were really starting to just. It's your prove. second Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, we're trying to prove. And that you're we're, trying to grow your base. Yeah, trying that was to a good way to grow your base. It was. Yep. Yeah. So I'm good. I'm happy with that decision, but I wouldn't do it again. Okay. Well, got, thank you guys for joining me again today. Uh, we were talking about uh, what to, uh, how to pick an artist uh, for your game. Uh, next week, we'll be coming back again, and we'll be talking about um, how we should go about uh, talking to, or. Uh, Working with the artist. Yeah, working with the artist, uh, the mechanics of, you know, just how uh, 
uh, the 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 all, all the you know contracts stuff like that how, how all that stuff meshes together and how you can get your the artists that you chose and get the game finished up so thank you for joining us uh, I'm Richard New I'm here with Jeremy Commander and Brian Hink uh, you can uh, contact us uh, on the the comments below or on uh, bgg.com look for the Forbidden Limb uh, boardgamegeek.com yep, yep, yep. Uh, and so thank you very, very much for joining us and I'll see you across the table someday. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.